All right, guys, going to do some random, you know, boxing talk here. Um, you know, let's talk some boxing, man. You know, I um, I want to talk about the heavyweight division. I want to talk about pound for pound. All right, and just kind of just just have a boxing discussion here. So that's it, nothing in particular. And check it out. All right. The heavyweight division. Um, you'll hear people, for some strange reason, deb debate amongst themselves whether or not the heavyweight division has fallen. Right? I, I've I've heard people on here, um, and I've seen comments, and I've seen on forums, and I've seen on uh, social media. Right? I've seen individuals make an argument that the heavyweight division in the United States has not fallen. That it's as good as it's always been. But it's just that the rest of the world just got better. Right? And, you know, I guess that the premise behind that is they just don't want to admit how good Klitschko is. You know, using, I'm going to have to use Klitschko as an example. They don't want to admit how good Klitschko is. They don't want to admit that Klitschko would have dominated no matter what era. Heavyweight boxing hasn't fallen. Klitschko is just that much better, right? Now keep in mind, I want to make this very clear, and I think everybody should know this. I think very highly of the Klitschko brothers, right? I actually like the Klitschko brothers. I, I've never been one of the guys on here that to really bash them, and I don't go by the extreme that any all-time great would have knocked out any of the Klitschko's. I, I don't go that far, right? Um, and and I made the argument that you can, I believe Vitaly is the better of the two brothers, but you can make an argument for top 30, top 20 even, you know, heavyweights of all time for the Klitschko brothers. And even that's kind of far uh, for some of my peers on here, but that that's not here nor there, right? It doesn't change the fact that the heavyweight landscape in boxing as a whole is, in fact, nowhere near okay, um, what it was in its heyday. It's just, it's just nowhere near. It's nowhere near what it was in the 90s. Definitely not the 80s. Definitely not the 70s. Right? So, and let me explain why. I'm, I'm not just saying that. I'm not just going by a quote-unquote, you know, looking at the fighters and I'm just going by eye tests and that's it. No, that, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just using my head and I'm using logic here. It's, it's not that hard to comprehend here, right? So let's look at it. Let's just let's look at it for a moment. Um, what has impacted boxing then? You know, what, you know, heavyweight boxing especially. You know, the, the weight classes have been a good thing for boxing in the sense that you know a lot of these smaller athletes who are still great athletes you know have found boxing as a, as a sport to compete at a high level um, where a lot of these smaller dudes you know sorry you're not gonna make it in the NBA you know you can't be 5'8 and make it in the NBA you would have to be um, ridiculously good right like I'm, I'm talking ridiculously good but um, you're not going to be, you know, a small dude and make it in the NFL, you know, unless you do something so amazing in a certain position, you know, um, you're not going to be a small dude and compete in, in our major sports here. So, and, and also the United States, I mean, we, we have a lot of sports that we compete at a high level, you know, and, um, and boxing just isn't the first choice. A lot of a lot of our big athletes it just isn't in fact it wasn't even Deontay Wilder's first choice right um, and that's the, that's the truth for a lot of our heavyweights a lot of them are taking up boxing pretty late in the game you know they're starting to hit um, the mitts very very late in the game Deontay Wilder what he accomplished winning a uh, bronze medal uh, just being in the sport a very short period of time is actually kind of astonishing. Um, 
And yes, he didn't beat the man. He didn't beat the man, right? He didn't beat like a like Vladimir Klitschko to be the world champion. Uh, but the fact that he still has a a trinket right now is is kind of astonishing in itself as well. He has not been in the sport that long. Um, and I still have my questions and my reservations about Deontay Wilder, but that's why we fight the fights, you know. And um, I personally, I, I actually had Povetkin win the fight. Um, I thought it was going to be a good fight. I see a lot of holes in Deontay Wilder. Um, and um, I think it's only a matter of time before somebody exposes them. But he's still, you know, fun to watch. And um, he still has room to improve even. You know, so he could still get better, you know, so you never know. He may even prove me wrong, but that's why we fight the fights. Um, but with that said, aside from competition, you see the effects of it. I mean, it's depressing how many boxing gyms we have now. It's depressing, especially when you read into... And you could even look into the amount of gyms that there was at one point. I mean, we're, we are at a point right now where Pauli Malignaggi left Gleason's gym because he wanted to find better sparring. So he went all the way to Wildcard, which is probably, right now, Wildcard has to be the most popular gym in the United States, at least top three, you know. Um, Gleason's gym is one of the most popular gyms in the United States. You know, but when you have a, you know, um, a boxer like Pauli Malnagy having to leave because he's just not finding good sparring there, I mean, that, that's kind of depressing, especially how consolidated these gyms have become. You know, I mean, you have a lot of these gyms are actually half MMA, half boxing, you know, or you know, a lot of them have fucking cages in them for MMA fighters to train in. Um, you know, the number, it's, it's, I'm not even talking guys like, oh, there used to be 300 and now we're down to 200 gyms. No, no, I'm talking about like, um, we're dramatically down. Okay. Dramatically down in the amount of gyms. Um, I mean, there was a time, man, when, you, when you were the man of a gym, like even that mattered, you know, that was like a trinket in itself. And now it's like, eh, you know. Um, now, understandably so, that there's some nuance here, and you know, a lot of these guys have, um, especially when they're established names, they have camps, you know, and stuff like that. You know, so it's a little different, you know. But even then, man, I mean, it's just the amount of of boxing gyms that we have now. It's it's depressing. Okay. It's, it, it really is. Uh, I mean, especially when a lot of them, like, you look them up online and shit, they're like fucking, they have yoga classes in them. I mean, it's, it's, it's depressing, okay? It's just depressing, you know? Half of the people there, they're not even there, like, training boxing serious. It's either, it's a lot of them are MMA guys trying to work their hands, um, you know, exercise classes, like, you know, throw a jab, throw a jab, and a right. And a right, and a jab, and a kick. <laughs> you know, like that, that's what it is, man. Like it's it's depressing, right? It's depressing. Um, you know, and um, the pool that we have to pick from is just not that great. You know, it's just it's not that great. A lot of our kids are not even into boxing. They don't even watch boxing. Like what you know, so for them to even put on a pair of gloves and get in each in a in a ring you know and train you know it's just a, a lot of these boxers now man they're they're people being recruited to it you know hey sorry that that basketball career didn't work out you know you had that injury fuck how about you try this sport you know that, that that's what we're, we're down to here in the US that's what we've come down to that, that that's the state of boxing right now uh, in the heavyweight division you know um, boxing as a whole has been impacted but more so the heavyweight division you know you almost wonder like if Sean Porter was a bigger dude 
you know, would he have still be in boxing or, you know, like, I don't know. Um, if he was able to, you know, get a big scholarship and go to the NFL, would Sean Porter really be boxing right now? You know, you have to, like, ask, ask yourself these questions. Um, so, you know, when people say, oh, heavyweight boxing in the U.S. is as big as it's ever been. It's just that now that they just can't take the heat. The, you know, the, they just can't keep up with the competition worldwide now. I mean, that is laughable. Okay, I mean, the, it's just this. That's a laughable thing to say, right? Um, <laughs> you know, and it's not like I wish they were right. You know, like shit. Like I, I, I wish we still had great heavyweights. It's just that they're just getting beat by the competition worldwide. You know, we would still ha wouldn't we still see great fights amongst heavyweight boxers, though, in the U.S.? I mean, on the come up? Like, what? Like, I don't know. I don't know what world a lot of these people live in. Um, but that's the state of the heavyweight division right now. I mean, we are at a point where we have to seek out and get some of these dudes, and, and, and it's hard. You know, I've actually, when I was at Rope Dope Radio, and I think um, Joe Abib will kind of remember this, I mean, we had this boxer called Holly Lawson on, and she was talking about a lot of these athletes that didn't quite make it to the NFL, NBA, etc., trying to transition into boxing, and it, they, their bodies just aren't made for it. You know, it's just they've been training for a whole other type of sport their whole life, and and they just they look awkward, and they just it's hard to get them to transition to boxing. It's an extremely difficult thing to do. You know, so it's that's the state that we're in right now. You know, um, and that, and that's that. You know, um, plus the, the fact that we have a pussified society doesn't help shit either, All right? So it's just not to say that you're a pussy if you don't want your kids boxing. Don't get me wrong, All right? But just overall, um, the the entire culture in this country is just different now, man. So. You know, it's just the way it is. Now, I want to end this with talking about the pound-for-pound pound concept. And, you know, I'll just finish talking about the heavyweight division, which has been the darling division for years now. Um, and For years. Did I see years? Over a century, right? Um, the heavyweight division has been the darling division. And... Um, I'm only bringing this up because I keep hearing people talk about, I don't believe in pound for pound. You know, like, they don't believe in pound for pound. I don't know who told, like, this is not a religion. That's something you have to believe in, okay? It's not like, I'm not asking you if you believe in God, okay? I mean, to me, this is almost the equivalent of asking, telling me you don't believe in breathing. You know, like, I, I don't believe in breathing. You know, like, that's fine. You don't have to believe it. You're still breathing, okay? Um... <laughs> heavyweight division, okay, um, was the darting division for a long time. There was a point in time where when someone was asked, who's the best fighter in the game? That was the heavyweight champion of the world, okay? That's it. Like The, the heavyweight champion of the world was the best fighter in the world. It was, regardless of anything, you put two fuckers in the ring, who, who's always going to come out on top? It was always the heavyweight champion, right? That was the best guy, or or if it was an up and coming guy or a contender, something like that. But it was usually a heavyweight. Okay, it, it was not. I mean, pound for pound, the concept of it, right? And I'm not talking about pound for pound list. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about the concept and the the framework, the mentality th that takes part in that. Okay, the concept of that evolved over time right so if I just do a quick sure there was like Benny Leonard etc but if, if I think where it was really prominent was with Sugar Ray Robinson right Sugar Ray Robinson at one point you know he was the best fighter in the world right the best pound for pound fighter in the world what did they mean by that did they mean that he could go in there and beat the shit out of the heavyweight champion of the world that's not what they were saying, right? Um, so it's it just the framework of it evolved over time. 
you know, and, and that, that allows you to kind of view a fight uh, between two smaller fighters and appreciate it. That, that, that's all that means, okay? It means that you can look at a small guy and say, that's greatness. You know, even though you know, you know, that guy moves up and fights bigger men, okay, they'll smash his face in. You know, even though you subconsciously know that, you don't think about that while you're watching the fights. Nobody watches a welterweight fight and says, man, what a great fight, but we all know he moves up to fight fucking Klitschko. Fucking Klitschko will fuck him up. That's just not something you say. That's not, that's not um, ingrained, in, ingrained in your mentality. You know, when, when, you're talk, when, when you're talking about that, you're, you're kind of focused on a division or around a division. You know, you want to know how he's going to do against somebody else their own size, generally speaking. You know, so um, that that's what the understanding of the pound for pound concept is. It's not that complicated, but some people just, you know, just to sound cool or or whatever, you know, say, I don't believe in pound for pound. When I've listened to countless videos or arguments that you made where you were talking in pound for pound language, you know, even if you don't know you're doing it. So, with that said, this style boxing, um, keep it boxing. Peace.